Welcome back to Design Thinking and Innovation Projects Week 8. In this week, we will apply what you learned in the tools uh, to projects. Uh, the first being uh, creating personas and then creating the OI OR table. But this is also the week uh, we will do a summary of what you did and document it. First through a report all the way from week 1 to 8 and a presentation of the visuals from week 1 to week 8. More of this during the presentation. So, section P8, week 8. So, we will be looking at personas and how to create an OIOR table. So, the contents of this section are creating the personas and making the OIOR table, followed by redefining the problem statement. We will also look at what is the mid course report plus presentation submissions all the way from week 1 to week 8 and then more details on the documentation and how to do references and acknowledgements because you need to do it as part of the report and the presentation. So, the project involves creating personas and OIOR table with respect to the topic that you have done and also with respect to both the secondary research and the primary research as well as the analysis that you have done till now. Let us look at how to create personas, uh, details of which were also explained during the tool section. Basically, you need to create a persona to represent a typical user from your user segment, again related to your problem space. You can define the personas through his or her characteristics. You can also create several personas to represent different types of users. So, let us look at the step, make a list of the users connected with your topic. You can also refer to the user participant mapping that you did in week 4. Select the most important users relevant to your problem space. Write down the characteristics, the typical characteristic for each of the users. Uh, you could also draw or choose an image for the user. You could use the user to create a scenario. Uh, him or her doing the activity pertinent to your topic. Let us look at the OIOR table. We know that OIOR refers to O for observations, the next I for inferences, the next O for opportunities for design and the R for recommendations for design. So, we need to create an OIOR table. Uh, starting from observations to making inferences to finding opportunities and then to outlining the recommendations relevant for your design. This is the right stage also to redefine the problem statement. So, let us look at the steps of creating the table. You need to list the relevant observations connected with your topic, the most relevant ones. Make a list of inferences from your study. Make a list of the opportunities for design thrown up by the inferences and a make a list of recommendations for design based on opportunities for design. Do the above steps in form of a table and based on the table one can redefine the problem statement. And uh, if you are a bit confused there are examples shown in the tool section. Let us have a look at redefining the problem statement. Redefining the problem statement could include what is being designed, for whom it is designed, how is it designed, where is it used and which materials or process does it involve. Let us have a look at an example. 
we started with a problem statement saying it is a toy for children that was the initial problem statement. Now having done secondary research, primary research, analysis part 1, analysis part 2, you have a much better understanding of the needs for this problem space. So, you can define now the problem statement with a lot more details. So, now it could be defined as designing and engaging play and learn constructive toy that means it is for what? For children in the age group of 3 to 6 for whom? With features of collaboration, sharing and storytelling, how? To be used at home and play school, where? Using sustainable materials that is to do with the materials. Okay, so, if you read it now, designing and engaging play and learn constructive toy for children in the age group of 3 to 6 with features of collaboration, sharing and storytelling to be used both at home and play school using sustainable materials. So, if you look at it, it is a lot more detailed and it kind of looks at now a redefinition of the problem statement. So, let us look at what are the deliverables. Uh, this is part 1 of the deliverables, you will have to submit twice. Uh, this is the mid session because we have covered from week 1 to 8 and we still have week 9 to 16 to cover. Okay, so, that becomes the part 2. In the part 1, you have some project deliverables, a report and a presentation. Okay, Let us look at the details. Okay, so, the week 1 to 8 report documents the summary of the progress of the project that you made all the way from week 1 to 8 in a text format. Okay, it can have visuals, but you need to describe what you have done. It needs roughly just a page per week. Okay, so, include one page for every week. Okay, the report should be of the size A4, vertical format, uh, 11 point type, line spacing should be 1.5. Okay, so, these are the definitions for the week 1 report. Let us look at the presentation slides and pages. Uh, this presentation documents the summary of the progress of the project from week 1 to 8 in a visual format. That means, you need to include all the maps and charts and diagrams and photographs uh, that you have collected. Okay. So, roughly 2 slides for every 2 weeks. Okay. So, means that 1 slide per week, but 2 slides per every 2 weeks. Uh, the presentation slide uh, has these specifications 254 mm into 453 or if you select the 16 by 9 ratio in your presentation that automatically comes into this particular size. It is a horizontal format. Okay, the minimum point size should be 14 points uh, single spaced okay. and the presentation should include uh, the mappings and tables. Uh, the minimum required mappings and tables that we are requesting you to do is one tool for every two weeks. Since we covered eight weeks, it means at least four tools you need to have a presentation on. Okay, Let us look at some more details. So, the week 1 to 8 report needs to include title of the design project, listing of the content, introduction, you know why this particular project, a page of it, summary of the secondary research, summary of this primary research, analysis part 1 and part 2 and also part 2 would include all the way from inferences to recommendations and then redefining the problem statement. Okay. At this point of time, you need to include full references, acknowledgement and it could have from 8 to 12 pages uh, submit it as one PDF document. And the week 1 to 8 presentation slides will in include a cover page with the title of the design project, page 1 and 2 are secondary research with the tools, page 3 and 4 would be covering the primary research with the tools, page 5 and 6 analysis with the tools 
7 and 8 analysis part 2 and redefining the problem statement along with the tools and page 9 would have references and acknowledgements. Again, uh, make the presentation and submit it as one PDF document. Some samples of it, uh, this is how a sample page from your report would look like your title there, subtitle if applicable, your roll number, no name, institution or any of that, just the roll number will do, abstract and then introduction. Okay. And if you look at couple of pages, uh, it would be like this. <clears throat> the second page also has a look at uh, how to put the table in between or a diagram or a chart or a map next to it. Okay, and this is a sample from the presentation, okay, slide or page from the presentation. So, for example, the brainstorming uh, and then mind mapping has been documented here, okay. So, this is refers to week 1 and 2, okay, and then they have done primary research. Uh, so, photographs from the primary research have been captured here. This was the field visit, okay. So, roughly it gives you a feeling of how to make these presentations and uh, if you look at it, there has to be 8 pages covering the week 1 to week 8 uh, along with the title page and the acknowledgement and the references. So, hope that gives you a picture of what to do in your project submission. Let us have a look at references and acknowledgements. This is repeat from section A3, uh, you know recommended is uh, uh, to follow one system. Here is an example of uh, following the Harvard system, uh, where in along with the text you put the author and the year and then in the reference at the end of the you know for example, either the report or the presentation, you mention the author, the year, the title of the you know book or article, uh, the publisher and the place. Okay. And if it is something downloaded from the net, it is again author, the year, okay, the title of the article or the uh, page and uh, where is it available. So, you need to mention the URL followed by when did you access it. Let us look at how to do acknowledgements. Uh, this is also repeated from section A3. So, during your research and analysis, you might have taken help from many people. Okay. So, it is very, very important that you acknowledge their assistance. Okay. So, for example, it could be faculty members and mentors, it could be librarian or an expert in your topic, it could be institution or organizations that have helped you with your research. Okay. So, first name, last name, name of the institution and organization, email address, this is optional. Okay, so, this is how you do the acknowledgements. So, thanks a lot for listening. Uh, this was section P8, week 8. Let us look at a summary of the projects from week 1 to week 8. Week 1, we started with selecting the subject or the topic for your project. We did brainstorming on your topic. Week 2, if you had not yet selected the project name or the topic, uh, you had week 2 to do it okay. and then you did mind mapping in week 2. Week 3, we started the secondary research part 1. We asked a lot of questions, the 5W and 1H and did a table and a matrix out of that. Week 4, we had a closer look at the users. Uh, that was secondary research part 2. So, you did a user participant mapping. Week 5, we started primary research part 1. Uh, we did contextual enquiry. Week 6, primary research again part 2. Uh, we did questionnaires and talking to a subject expert uh, using cue cards. Week 7 was analysis part 1. Uh, we did artifact activity and spatial mappings and in week 8, it was analysis part 2, uh, how to create personas and making the OIOR table followed with uh, redefining the problem statement. 
example. So, this is a summary of the project from week 1 to week 8. Let us do a summary of what we have done till now in week 8. We did analysis part 2 uh, with inferences to recommendations. Then we did tools, uh, personas and how to create the OI OR table. The project involved data analysis and creating personas and making the OI OR table with respect to the topic that you have chosen. Now, we will follow up with a case study again an interesting case study about the Indian medicine system.